It has been a rough couple of weeks here in the lab. As you guys may know, I haven't gotten any videos done and that's really my fault because I've been doing some tests that have taken up a lot of my time. If you're interested to in know what an all NVMe SSD uh, array is like in Unraid, I'll drop a link in the video description below and this is all text-based and it is a blog post. It is not a video, but if you're interested, I did about two whole weeks worth of testing on that. Uh, to get some information that may help those of you that are curious to know why you shouldn't be doing it. And there's probably more testing to come with that. But some of the other problems I've been having around here that have been keeping me from doing anything productive are batteries dying and potentially a UPS dying, as well as this LSI RAID card. Thankfully, the replacement just arrived today. And also my third batch of RAM. I have gone through 128 gigabytes or, or 128 gigabyte RAM kit. I have gone through two of these already and this will be the third. I cannot seem to keep my Unraid server up for more than two days and it's been absolutely infuriating. And by, it actually has been up more than two days but I'd say my average uh, uptime is probably two days but that's, that's the point. So today we're gonna learn. I've been taught a valuable lesson so now I need to explain or tell you guys why you should not be like me and fall victim to I have years of experience I know what I'm doing everything will be fine mentality so we're gonna test our memory with Unraid's built-in tool and make sure this batch freaking works so I can have a working Unraid server and if it doesn't then degnam it we have to switch back to that beast of an Intel system which has like 128 gigs of RAM, maybe 192, I don't even know anymore. It's a total beast and overkill and makes a lot of heat, which is the whole reason why we were leaving it in the first place. But we may have to switch back if this doesn't work because I don't know if I'm willing to go through a fourth or fifth batch of RAM just to have a working server. I may have to switch brands actually. That's probably what I should do. So without any further waiting, let's go ahead and see what we need to do to test our RAM. All right, so I'm just gonna really quickly try and get this RAM installed and then we're gonna run um, the memory test all night long uh, while nobody's using the server. And that way we can fi figure out if this RAM is actually good to go or not. All right, this should be the simple part. Um, testing this stuff is really easy to do. So let's take a look on this monitor up here and see what needs to be done. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do actually is just make sure that my memory is actually set to 3200 megahertz. And that's because we installed the new stuff. So uh, it looks like those changes are sticking. So we don't really need to do anything here. And now we're just going to boot straight into the OS. And from here, we're literally going to, going to select the MemTest86+. Plus. We'll enter fail-safe mode by pressing F1, and we'll let this run for the rest of the night. So while we're waiting for my memory to be tested, let's go ahead and talk about why you should do this. Obviously, you're going to want to do this as early on as possible so you can discover issues with your RAM as early as possible, which is something I failed to do because generally I haven't had any problems with RAM since probably DDR2 days. And even then that was very, very, very rare. So if you're starting a brand new build or you're getting brand new RAM in, you're probably going to want to test it. Now, how long do you test do this test for? Because the test, as far as I know, will run indefinitely as long as you let it. Well, the internet seems to recommend that you do at least 12, 24 hours, maybe 12 at a minimum, depending on where you're looking. Um, I find that that is probably also the best measure to take as well. But in practice, because I don't often practice what I preach, obviously, because that's the whole point of this video, um, I find that typically errors uh, can be found very early on, like within the first 15 minutes. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop after 15, 20 minutes. So I always try to do my, t this will be the second time I think I've ever run this test, by the way, so not always. But anyway, when I, tr when I do these tests, I usually do them overnight or when everyone's asleep, which is what we're doing right now. Um, and honestly, when I wake up in you know six hours or whenever I wake up, that's probably gonna be good enough, probably. Um, obviously your mileage will vary greatly. And if you don't trust computers very much, um, you, know, you should just go for that full 24 hours and see what happens uh, on your test rig. But don't take my word for it. Take some other people that are much smarter than I am and actually you know, know what this, these tools do and how they work. Uh, I'm just kind of, you know, doing my own thing. So anyway, I'm going to hit the sack. 
I will see you guys bright and early in the morning to see what results we have on my RAM. The next day. All right, so looks like uh, the test has been running for about six hours and 53 minutes. We've made one pass. There it is, one pass, finding zero errors. So I'm not sure how long it takes for one pass to take, but I think what I'm gonna let this do is actually get to about eight hours and then come back and check it. I may even let it run for 12, but um, it's looking pretty good so far. Um, as I may have mentioned before, typically I find that this thing is really good at finding errors really early on, uh, at least in my last three attempts. It found all of the errors within about the first 15 to 20 minutes. Actually, 15, 15 to 18 minutes, I would say. One eternity later. Okay, so we just completed our second pass, and we're coming up on the 12th hour now. So I think I'm going to call this good here. This is probably the longest I've actually ever ran one of these. And as you can see, there are no errors populated here. And also it's telling us there's zero errors, 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 wow, errors there. So uh, yeah, I'm going to call this good, and I guess we're sticking with Ryzen. All right, everyone, after a grueling 12 hours, I think it's safe to say that the system should be stable from here on out hopefully, and let this be a lesson, not only to myself, but to you, that if you are planning to go out there and get a hot new piece of hardware to make sure you use protection and also go get tested before you stick in new RAM into your system, because Lord knows what it's been through and what imperfections it'll bring to your hardware. So on that note, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.